Okay, it's day 66, and as you can see, big changes have occurred again. I've transplanted what was in a larger pot from that glass pot a few days ago into an even bigger pot. They were in a medium-sized pot for, I think, two days before I decided to get an even bigger pot. And also, there's a lot less lighting than you're normally accustomed to seeing in my videos because this LED light right behind it is broken. So this pot has a diameter of 37.1 centimeters at the top. It's huge. And I had to pack in a lot of soil to get it full. Did that thing where, you know, when you're doing a transplant and things don't go right, and you have gloves on and you're holding the root ball of a small, you know, cylinder or ball of soil in one hand and you're scooping soil because you didn't get enough uh, with the other hand into the pot that you're going to transplant into and pretty soon the root ball starts to uh, crumble a little bit in your hand and you know so it wasn't a complete disaster but I heard a little bit of root breakage in some places and you know now there's just no structure to these plants they're just kind of falling over like vines and they're not going to be upright probably and also some bad things happen so here's one of the bad things that happened this plant had a broken stalk I heard sort of a snap at some point after holding the root ball up for a long time what I saw was that this entire shoot system that we're looking at had broken off you know it was half broken so I decided to just break it off make a clean break because it would be doomed like that anyway and plant it somewhere else in the soil and water it a little bit and as you can see these cotyledons are dying uh, that's not a good sign I think that means this thing is basically doomed and for this leaf that's the one that kind of had the yellowing browning edges that you don't see in any other plant so I know the foliage still looks very lush, but these plants have been subjected to a tremendous amount of stress over the last three or four days. You know, in the outside, they've been exposed to the cold at night. So I don't think it gets anywhere near frost temperatures these days, but that's another stress factor. And just the act of transplanting plants itself damages the roots and changes the conditions the plants are accustomed to. So that is a big disturbance and transplanted plants will usually just sit there seemingly for a few days before they start growing again probably because of all these stress factors added together so I'm just hoping that only that one plant that broke off is gonna die and its root system might die or it might re-sprout you never know but you know one of those is probably gonna die and I'm not sure if that shoot system is robust enough to become an independent plant. Okay, it's day 67 of my honeydew germination experiment and day 13 of my ginger germination experiment. So as you can see, I've made a reflector. It's just some used cardboard that came from a, a hall mirror box, full body mirror. So all I did was tape two sheets of aluminum foil parallel, uh, but functionally this reflector is 97 percent or more complete because you know that chunk missing at the bottom that's not gonna really help out anyway and the strip in the middle that's uh, negligible so if you look down here you can see how much of a difference this reflector makes or to peel it away look how much darker that becomes so the most obvious spot is right over there on the carpet but that's just because that's a reflective surface with uh, synthetic fibers and there's also the pots too they become br much brighter but you know the rest of the light is just getting absorbed by these plants and the soil so that makes a huge difference and I ran out of aluminum foil that's why this isn't complete but I'm gonna go out and buy some more. Uh, these are all very cheap materials, very realistic for anyone who wants to copy me and do the same. And I have another half of the box and another slab that I don't know what to do with. But I was thinking I'll just make two reflectors like this and have them at different angles and provide you know, the hot, humid environment these plants probably like a lot more than the current mid-March, you know, early spring San Diego weather 
especially indoors, there's not all that much sunlight. The window of sunlight is very short during the day. You know, it's only about maybe a hundred minutes at this point, if even. I've invested in some hardware. I bought these pots and I bought this lamp to replace the LED lamp that broke. So it's still day 67 for these honeydew plants and they've been through a lot of trauma. They've been through two transplants. The last one in which they, I kind of botched and damaged some roots. Although I think the first transplant undoubtedly caused some damage as well. And you can see the results of that. There are casualties. Uh, what you see here is the desiccated corpse of something that broke off from a stem. So over here what we have is the broken off stem of this plant over here. So I don't think this thing is going to make it. It's lost all trigger pressure. That's a T-U-R-G-O-R. Trigger pressure is basically the pressure, the water pressure that plants need internally to keep them erect and all of these leaves have become flaccid. Um, not only that, well it's broken off so it has no more root system to provide water. So yeah, in most cases, like even if you plug this in into water or soil and you start watering like crazy, it, it's still gonna die. Um, I think only the more rigid plants, uh, you know, succulents, cacti, those would stand a much better chance of surviving under such circumstances because they're more built for that. But, you know, for a water-intensive, sun-intensive plant like this, it's usually a doomsday when it breaks. So one thing about this plant is I noticed that even before the two transplants, the cotyledons were dying. And that's a bad sign. It happened in the sole surviving plant from the early days of this experiment, you know, pre-day 40, when there was just really one plant doing well. And not even that much so. It was stagnant. But eventually its cotyledons died and it stagnated in growth and you know for this leaf I pointed out earlier that the leaf edges are kinda yellowing and you can still see that that's the case and everything else is kind of green everything else is kind of green but it's all withered due to loss of trigger pressure there's no more water coming in but water is still evaporating through the stomata or the, the little holes underside the leaves uh, through which a plant breathes. So basically, yeah, these everything's dead. I mean, I, I don't think there's much saving here to be done. I tried the best I could. I plugged it in soil immediately and I watered it. But, you know, that would be truly amazing if anything could be established there in terms of a root system. But I don't think, you know, the plant stem cells can differentiate that fast and form a root system to save this and close off... Uh, prevent the water loss and the bleeding. You know, maybe if I had this in complete darkness and in a sealed bag, this problem, you know, wouldn't happen with the uh, rapid loss of trigger pressure. But the other thing I can think of is maybe if I, you know, dunk this, you know, top part off, find, find the marrow stems, you know, cut off just a small piece and put that into some kind of rich cell media something synthetic to feed the plant cells then maybe it could survive but you know in any case I'm just waiting for this to die and then I'll throw it away. So with regards to the root system to which this broken stalk is still attached I think there's still a lot of promise there but this plant had problems already before the transplant so that makes me think that maybe something systemic was going on maybe there was some kind of root rot I do know that when a plant is compromised, uh, the stalks tend to break easily, like here. And I'm not quite sure of the biophysics behind that, but it, it happened clearly in this case. It's possible now that since the roots have been transplanted into much better conditions, and there's a lot more soil, and it's not just completely waterlogged all the time, that the root system will reestablish itself and send out new growth or a new shoot system or you know start generating buds or new apical meristems on this stock stub that we see here so I watered these plants last night in select spots I don't have enough water or I don't want to use all that water to cover the entire soil volume I just wanted to water the base of the stems uh, where the roots for each one of these plants is I didn't want to have a completely waterlogged soil situation again 
because that was probably applying extreme stress to these plants before. Although they seem to be fine. I mean, if you look at all of these, uh, there may have been some stress caused by putting them outside on the balcony for two nights, you know, cold stress. There are some signs of cotyledons or, or leaves. Uh, you can kind of see here. Uh, there's a little dying here. And then here, maybe a little bit. So that those are definitely bad signs. But if you look at everything else, uh, the leaves are very green and lush. And, you know, after a night of being in this soil, in this new environment, and me watering this, you know, I woke up in the morning and I used that reflector that I showed you to give these plants their first day of uh, indoor sunlight plus the reflector. It's a much bigger reflector than what I used before, which was basically the most slipshod way of creating a reflector, just wrapping some aluminum foil around with no tape or anything. And the plants all perked up by the time I got home. So they really perked up like this plant. Uh, it used to be straight up, and after the transplants, that was no longer the case, but it's no longer hugging the ground. So I can't really believe this, but you know, I'm never running out of things to talk about, and I thought I would have run out of things to talk about a really long time ago. But there's always new things, and I didn't do that much research on honeydew, uh, not much research at all. So this plant still remains the most robust individual. It has very large leaves, it has very short stem junctures, and it didn't have a big problem with falling over and phototropism. And it seems to have responded the best uh, after the transplants. So as you can see here, this is the original true leaf. And these are the cotyledons. They're not dying at all. And there's kind of a little bud there, uh, a meristem there, shoot meristem. And let's see, what's the order here? This is the second true leaf, I believe. That's the biggest one, I think. And this is the third true leaf. The first, second, and third are all about the same in size, you know, um, uh, but you know, I, I do think this one is bigger if you measure the second one. And the fourth one is developing, and then there's a fifth one and a shoot apical meristem here. And there's also something going on here. So if you look at that, unless that's some kind of anti-predator, and by predator I mean insect adaptation that I'm not aware of, it pretty much looks like a shoot meristem, a bud that can grow something. So I'm expecting a leaf later on, but you know, all these stem petiole junctures seem to have that. So I don't really understand what's going on. It could truly just be something to annoy insects so and prevent them from getting a foothold and breaking off the petioles or, or something like that. I don't know. So the second true leaf of this most well-developed plant I would say is, you know, 2.8, 2.85 inches, something like that, across. And I would say it's the same. So the third true leaf of this most well-developed plant is maybe 2.7 inches across, 2.7 inches long. So it's slightly smaller than the second true leaf, although... And this plant also has the most robust stem. It's very thick compared to that of all the other plants. These two plants, this one and this one, are very big as well. Uh, they're not quite as robust. And this one, in certain places, you know, there might be a little speck of uh, dying on the edges. So these plants have been really stressed out by all the stuff I put them through. But otherwise, I mean, if you look at the whole picture, they're still 99.99% green matter. So they're doing pretty well. And there's also one here that's basically, that was a seedling on the side. It's gotten, you know, relatively big. I don't want its leaf to be folded here. I'm going to undo that damage. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really upset this one. It's still doing fine. Um, I just don't want any uh, malformations. I mean, this leaf already has it bad enough because it's being covered by that. As for this plant, you know, it's the one that had the inverted root ball for a long time. And it's not doing too well, you know. Um, I think it'll continue to grow fine. It's just not as well as the other plants. I mean, there's some death here. Uh, this leaf seems fine. You know, it's working on a third true leaf. 
but its cotyledons are they're still not dying. I mean, they're green. It's just everything got buried by me, sort of moved underground. So that meant the root ball could stay in the soil and stay moist all the time. And I think for the long term, that'll help it establish a really strong root system and it'll flourish. So here's one of the seedlings. And here's the other one. And I purposely put them, you know, right beneath the surface of the soil uh, with an upright, you know, perpendicular to the soil position so they could develop and hopefully uh, regenerate their broken root systems. When I transplanted these, I damaged them and they had long tap roots with no lateral roots and basically those just broke off uh, somewhere along the line. So these things have been under a lot of trauma too and they're just starting to recover now but they've poked out of the soil in just 12 hours so I think they're gonna do great one thing I wanted to discuss are these little tendrils that appeared within the last 24 hours so it's kinda of coiled at the end you know what I think these are are tentacles that vines uh, such as honeydew use to bind other substrates physically you know, so at some point I'm going to have to think about whether I want to have some kind of scaffolding to provide these honeydew vines to climb onto. But then again, I thought about the honeydew fruits are so heavy in the end. Um, what if I have a giant honeydew developing on the scaffolding somewhere? Wouldn't that cause everything to come crashing down? So I don't know where the fruits uh, will occur. But you know, I've got a video of buffalo gourd in the wild from uh, Los Penasquitos Canyon Preserve. You can search my channel for that. And basically those gourds were growing near around the ground. They weren't anywhere as near as big as honeydews, but they could appear like literally anywhere on the vine. Here's another good example of what I'm talking about. It's on the other vine. Uh, I deployed one makeshift you know, 97% complete deflector today, but I've made these two solar reflectors uh, today, and they're complete, they're very large, and I'll deploy them tomorrow and show you just how powerful these